Hi folks, I'm uh, State Representative Josh Cutler. Welcome to the Cutler Corner. Uh, it's my honor to serve as State Representative for the 6th Plymouth District for the towns of Pembroke, Duxbury, and Hanson. And I'll be doing a monthly show here on PAC TV. Uh, I'm very excited to, for our first show to be continuing a theme that um, I talked about during the, my campaign, uh, that we're all in this together. And there are many services out there for folks who need a little helping hand in this uh, difficult economy. And uh, we want to help folks to connect with uh, some of the service providers. So we have some great folks, uh, some great guests on the show today to talk about some services that are offered uh, that uh, might be of uh, help to you or folks uh, in your neighborhood. So please um, tune in. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, first uh, Lisa Spencer, who is the Director of Energy and Emergency Programs at the uh, South Shore Community Action Council. Uh, welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Representative Cutler. And um, uh, my other guest uh, for our first segment is Kathy Pacini from South Shore Housing in Kingston. And uh, thank you both for coming. I think we'll have a we'll just have a little uh, little free flowing discussion about what kind of services you all uh, offer. And Lisa, why don't we start with you? Give us a brief background about what uh, what your organization does. Sure. Uh, well, we provide a variety of services for low income and elderly on the South Shore and uh, in, on the energy as far as the energy programs. That service territory also includes the Cape and Islands. Um, so. We provide programs like fuel assistance, weatherization, um, a heating system repair and replacement program. We have a variety of child care programs, including Head Start. Um, we have a food warehouse for local pantries to access. We have a transportation program for elderly and disabled, um, consumer aid program funded by the Attorney General's office, and a variety of other. Well, that, that's great. Let's talk, let's talk about uh, weatherization. What exactly do you mean by that? What, what, what are the services involved with that? Well, for weatherization, um, the first step to access the weatherization program is to apply for the fuel assistance program. And um, households would uh, either come to our offices right in Plymouth mm -hmm. to apply and bring with Why them... Tell the folks what the location and address are. Sure. Uh, we're at 265 South Meadow Road in Plymouth. Uh, and we also have 54 outreach sites throughout the South Shore. 54? 54. Wow. Most of the councils on aging, um, local child care, uh, old colony elderly services. So someone um, from Pembroke or Duxbury could go to their local council on aging or senior absolutely. center? Absolutely. They, okay. they, uh, the list of the intake outreach sites are found on our website. Um, which is www.sscac.org, um, as well as uh, detailed explanations of, of the programs and how to apply. But the short version is that um, households can bring uh, gross income for all household members, proof of identity, and proof of address. Okay. And um, then if they're eligible for fuel assistance, they're eligible for weatherization. Um, the fuel assistance program provides payments to vendors for people that are found eligible. We have about 150 vendors, um, including uh, everything from propane to oil, kerosene, uh, electric, natural gas, so um, any, any wood and coal, whatever the heat source is. Okay. Um, so. So how does that actually work? The mechanics of that. Uh, well, if someone's determined eligible, and the income eligibility is also found on our website, but for example, a household of one uh, with an income below about $31,000 would be eligible, um, and a household of two, for example, um, with an income of less than about $40,000. So um, they'd be eligible for uh, heating bills that they incur between November 1st and April 30th. Mm -hmm. Um, there are different amounts of assistance depending on heat source as well as income. So those with okay. the lowest income receive the highest amount of assistance. It's a sliding scale sort of approach? It's a sliding scale, okay. exactly. Um, and then for, for the weatherization program, we uh, send an energy auditor out to the home, um, and they do a, a complete um, energy assessment of what might be needed in terms of uh, insulation, and air sailing measures, okay. and that is uh, federally funded and also funded by private utilities. 
So and we that's were, income but, eligible as well. You have to be that if you're eligible for fuel assistance, you're eligible for weatherization. Okay. So there's no cost to the. So that would help you with waste to actually save on your energy costs. By, exactly. And the same thing, we have a, a burner repair uh, and replacement program. So households that are homeowners, in that instance, for for weatherization, you can be either a renter or a homeowner. But for the HeartWEP, uh, excuse me, the burner repair and replacement program, um, it's primarily for homeowners. Um, and they can get everything up to, from, from a minor repair on their heating system to a complete heating system replacement. Terrific. Well, let's come back to that. Uh, I want to sure. give Kathy a chance. So, uh, Kathy, you're from South Shore Housing, yes. and you guys do uh, terrific programs with uh, foreclosure prevention, uh, rental one-on-one class we were talking about, and um, tell me some of the, give me a quick, uh, uh, give us a quick uh, overview of what those programs entail. Okay, well, South Shore Housing is what we call a regional nonprofit. So we're one of um, nine in the state, and we cover all of Plymouth and Bristol County. So the programs that we offer is we have the um, Section 8 program, which is now known as the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Okay. We run the, um, some MRVP programs, which is a Massachusetts Rental Voucher Program, as well as some special um, programs as well. Um, through our Housing Services Department, we offer a Housing Consumer Education Center, which um, can help any... Um, any person with any type of housing crisis um, with information referral. What would be it so to sample uh, so housing crisis is, that someone might uh, encounter? Someone's behind in their rent. And, okay. Um, <clears throat> they've gotten a 14-day notice. So we can educate them on what the process of eviction is, what they mm -hmm. can expect when they go to court. Um, and then um, right now we also have some financial assistance through our RAFT program, which is residential assistance for families in transition. Okay. Um, to assist with um, families helping them maintain or obtain new housing um, so people don't become homeless. Sure. Um, it's specifically for families, and we can help them pay the rent arrearages, sometimes mortgage arrearages, um, utilities arrearages. If they're moving to find a more affordable housing, we can help them with that moving cost, whether it's first last security, eating moving um, trucks to help them actually get there. If families are having that housing crisis, we can help them with um, paying child care to help them stabilize until things can kind of stabilize with the family. Now, we think we're sort of in an affluent area, but there, there are obviously folks out there who, who rely on these kinds of services. Uh, I'm sure it, it, it might surprise some of our viewers to know to what extent uh, that there's such a need for, um, for, there's a for that. There's a large need. Um, the state actually put $8 million into this program throughout the state. So we got a portion of that to mm -hmm. help the, um, the families in our area. So um, people call on a regular basis um, for that type of assistance. We're also working with homeowners um, to help them modify um, their mortgages, work with their lenders. Anyone who's delinquent, they can give us a call. We have two HUD certified housing counselors to help them um, work on stabilizing their mortgages and maybe trying to get a, a modification. So we were lucky enough to get some Attorney General's money this year um, to the home corps, and um, that's going very well as well. And what are the, the eligibility guidelines for, for this um, foreclosure modification and the there various programs? There are no, um, some who's still in my so there's so, really no eligibility guidelines. So if you were, live in the area and you need help, you can call and... If you're behind, um, definitely give us a call at South Shore Housing. We're located at 169 Summer Street in Kingston. Our phone number is 781-422-4200. And um, they will get you to a, a foreclosure prevention specialist. And we'll uh, work with anyone who has a housing need. Uh, especially with our Housing Consumer Education Center, there are no financial guidelines. So we are working with families who call us with zero income to people who are making six figures. Okay. So, and you have a, a rental 101 class? Uh, we do. Tell me about that. Um, every week uh, at Social Housing in our offices in Kingston, we're offering a housing 101, which is to assist families or individuals trying to find affordable housing. So we run them every Wednesday. They are located on our website, um, which is www.southshorehousing.org. So they're listed um, right now, I think, through March. So, But we do offer them every week um, through the year, and we provide all the applications and guidance on how to apply. That's great. And um, so and there's also a, a program you offer for uh, first-time home buyers who might be trying to get a home for the first time. That can be, a, I remember moving back to Duxbury myself, it's, it can be a, a difficult uh, process. But tell me about what you guys can help uh, in terms of that. Um, 
we offer first and home buyer classes um, up to six times in a year. Okay. Um, it is a 10 hour program. So we work in collaboration with um, some of our community partners. So we always have a, a bank who comes in. We work with a local real estate agent. We work with a local insurance person, um, the home inspector. And so we have guests who come in during this 10 hour class. And we are chapter certified through the state of Massachusetts um, to provide the class. And what it allows is it, it gives um, anyone who's looking at buying a home for the first time mm -hmm how to do it right, the things to look for, um, just try, trying to educate people. Um, and statistics show that anyone who does um, take a first time home buyer class usually does not end up in a foreclosure situation. So it is really beneficial and a lot of the banks are um, requiring um, oh, they are. Okay. homeowners to, or new homeowners to, to take a first time home buyer class. Um, they're also, if you do take a class and get the certificate, you are eligible for up to a, um, a few different types of special loan programs. That's great. And those are offered, say, 10 times a year? Um, we offer them six times oh, a year. Oh, six times a year. Excuse me. Okay. And folks can call and get the website to find exactly. out when they... Exactly. They're always on our website. Okay. They can always call our offices and we'd be happy to share that information as well. Oh, great. Great. Well, so those are some uh, great programs that, uh, that folks can take advantage of. I'm, I'm curious to kind of, maybe you could uh, talk about the human side of it a little bit and just... Uh, Tell me some of your experiences, obviously, out, you know, just uh, anecdotally about um, what kind of a difference your programs can make to folks um, uh, here on the South Shore. I'd be curious if you, you know, have any stories you can share, obviously not any names, but we just want to hear the, 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 the human side of, uh, of the, all these uh, programs. Well, over 30% of our households are, are elders on fixed income, so um, the amount of fuel assistance or weatherization that they've received, you know, can be a real... A lifesaver in effect. Um, not all elders have families that they can, uh, that they either live with or can ask for assistance, um, especially, you know, in these times when the family, the, their families may be uh, financially burdened as well. So um, we certainly uh, know that our, our program makes a difference. Uh, we took um, 14,500 applications Last year, fourteen thousand five hundred. Fourteen thousand five hundred. What area does that encompass? That we cover thirty-nine towns okay. from Hall South to Wareham, west to Middleborough, and the Cape and Islands. So that's a um, lot of uh, applications. And uh, typically, about uh, twelve thousand end up being eligible out of okay. that number. So, um, any idea year, for our area here how many f folks are? Uh, you know, are take are, are applying for the well, programs? Well, uh, the ballpark. Duxbury, Pembroke. Probably about 400 households. No kidding. Okay. Um, and um, I would say predominantly elders mm -hmm. and um, you know working households yeah. that still uh, are in the lower income. Um, but uh, last year we had uh, about uh, 7.6 million in fuel assistance for households. This year, right now, our federal funding is about 6.8 million. So we're waiting on the federal budget, mm -hmm. um, and... Um, As a new uh, representative, that's one of the things <laughs> I'm learning is, uh, you know, the line items in the budget, obviously, you know, it's money, but it has a human side to it, and Absolutely. it allows us to, to do the things to help folks, um, right. and so that's the, the burden that we share is trying to prioritize to get the money to the right places, and so I'm, I can appreciate so. uh, all your advocacy for, for that. Yes. So. Kathy, what about you? What, what, tell me about a typical person that comes through your door what they may be looking for? Uh, well, we see so many different types of families. So we see um, families as well as a lot of individuals. Um, right now, I would say that a lot we're seeing is that they're doubled up with some families or friends. It's a short-term situation, and um, it's severely overcrowded. So they really need to find a place of their own. Mm -hmm. So um, with the assistance with our RAF program, we are able to meet with them, um, locate additional um, new housing for them um, that is affordable for them and help them with that startup cost, that first lesson security, which is so difficult to, to raise a $3,000, you know, for that first lesson security to get them stabilized in, um, in a safe, affordable place of their own. So um, we've done a lot of that work um, this past year with the implementation of the RAF program. Great. Well, we're going to uh, take a break in a second. We're going to uh, bring on a couple other guests, but I just want to give you a chance to just repeat your information, folks out there who, who want to learn more. If you could just 
uh, give out the uh, website and phone number again uh, sure. for, for the services. South Shore Community Action Council's website is www.sscac.org, and the uh, phone number for the you know the main agency phone number is 508-747-7575. The fuel assistance phone number is 508-746-6707. And South Shore Housing is www.southshorehousing.org. Our main office number is 781-422-4200. Great. Well, Lisa and Kathy, I want to thank you for, for coming on our show, our very first uh, episode here. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with two more guests, so stay tuned. I am Accountable Property. I am Hazard Mitigation. I'm External Affairs. I am Environmental and Historic Preservation, and I am FEMA. I am Information Technology. I am Travel. I am Other Needs Assistance. I am Safety, and I am FEMA. I am Public Assistance. I am Individual Assistance. I am Command Staff, and I am FEMA. And I am FEMA. And I am FEMA. And I'm FEMA. I am FEMA Corps. And we are tomorrow's FEMA. Welcome back. I'm uh, State Representative Josh Cutler, and you're tuning into uh, the first edition of the Cutler Corner. And our theme today is we're all in this together, and so we brought some folks in who uh, help provide services to folks out there and uh, make sure we have a chance for everyone to learn about some of the services that are available. So I have two new guests to, to uh, welcome, uh, Mike Gamaris from Remax Spectrum in Pembroke and Plymouth, and Arlene Tannenbaum from the uh, Kennedy Donovan Center. Uh, which does some great uh, programs, including early intervention, which is what, is what we're going to talk about today. So welcome to you, both of you, and thank you thank so much for coming and joining me on my first show. Yeah, thank so, you for uh, having us. Glad to be uh, here. Mike, you first. Mike, uh, Mike and I served together in the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce, uh, supporting small business, and uh, right. Mike is, uh, is an expert in uh, real estate and uh, home sales, and I wanted to give you a chance to kind of talk about some of the programs that you offer, Mike, for uh, home buyers out there including foreclosure prevention or anything out there that uh, might be of assistance to folks looking for, for help. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, we, we've uh, really taken a different uh, tact on real estate in our offices, and we focus on helping people stay in their homes. Uh, the, the past few years have been difficult in this economy, as you know, and uh, helping buyers and sellers uh, that are currently looking for homes or in homes that are having difficulty. We have a lot of foreclosure prevention, um, modificate, loan modification assistance that we provide, and um, one, it's been our focus, really, for the past two or three years. Uh, we think that education is, is really key, and people are, are spending a lot of their time uh, worrying about the difficult times that we're in and don't understand the help that's out there for them. So we've made a really concerted effort to uh, get out, educate people, have seminars on uh, new home buying, um, foreclosure prevention, and really helping them put their financial house in order uh, in order that, to make the right decisions for their family for, for housing. So we've, we've done a lot in that Tell area. me, so t the loan modification or foreclosure prevention, tell me how that works. What, if folks are out there listening, if it's a concern, how, what's the best way to, yeah, to get more information? It's, um, it's, it's a great option now for people. I think uh, five years ago, banks really didn't understand the importance of helping, buyer, uh, helping homeowners that are in homes and, and having financial difficulties, so foreclosure rates spiked. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last few years, there's been a lot of focus on uh, programs that we can put in place to help people stay in their homes. So short sales and uh, loan modification have been the, the two main areas. Uh, loan modification, basically how it works works is if someone's in their home and they can't afford it anymore, perhaps the value has dropped below mm -hmm. what their mortgage amount is. If they can afford a, a lower mortgage payment at an adjusted uh, market value for their home, banks would much rather help them with that mm -hmm. um, as opposed to go through the foreclosure <coughs> process and take the home away. That's an expensive process to go through. The, the biggest problem we have is people don't look for that assistance. You know, they, uh, pride comes in and they start to just shut down and, and mm -hmm. avoid it. Uh, but there's a lot out there to help them. Uh, short sales, another option. Yeah, just for viewers who may not be aware, can you explain what a short sale is? Yeah, uh, short sale is a, a situation <coughs> where uh, a homeowner is upside down on their mortgage, so they owe a lot more than what the home is worth. Mm -hmm. um, they can't afford to stay in it, even if the mortgage were to be modified uh, for a lower amount and a lower payment. Mm -hmm. So what the, the lenders will typically do is uh, approve uh, the sale of the home at a lower price 
uh, that the market will bear and will allow the, the uh, homeowner to leave the property without uh, chasing them for that value that they've uh, lost, the lender's lost. So it's a, it's a really good option. Um, a, lot of, a lot of lenders like Bank of America and Citi are actually paying homeowners um, some money to leave, you know, to give them an opportunity to, to a fresh start um, and helping them through that short sale process. So people just need to remember, you know, ask for the help, look, mm -hmm. look at what the options are. And we think of you know, Pembroke as being an affluent community, but there, there are folks in Pembroke that need the help. Is it Absolutely. Every yeah. town. You know, Every there, town. There really isn't a town on the South Shore that isn't affected by this, some more than others. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the things people, uh, the, the misconception is that the foreclosure uh, issue has gone away because they're you know, just not hearing as mm -hmm. much. Uh, but really, it's just a, a kind of a stay, and there's more coming. So we really need to get people understanding there's, there's help out there for them. Great. Great. Well, Eileen, I want to give you a chance. Uh, welcome. I, I had the privilege of uh, going to a legislative reception the other day as we were talking off camera for the early intervention program. It wasn't something I was really aware of beforehand and uh, really opened my eyes to hear about um, some of the things that can be done uh, with early intervention to help kids you know, at, at a very young age who might uh, otherwise um, to have developmental issues. So uh, I was uh, really excited to hear about it and glad to have you on our program today. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your organization and what uh, services you offer. Sure, thank you for having me. Um, so Early Intervention is a, a family-centered program that provides developmental services for children who are delayed in their development or <coughs> at risk for delay. And those risk factors can be either medical risk factors or environmental risk factors or children who already have a diagnosis. We work with children birth to three in their homes or at their child care centers or at their grandparents' homes. Um, at our center, which is located in Kingston now, um, we have child groups every day of the week um, for children who are ready to be in a more um, structured social situation where they still are receiving the services of the therapists um, but are learning to um, socially engage with their peers. Um, how, how does a parent kind of know that their child may have a developmental issue that, 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 you know, that should be addressed? How do you spot that or how do you get the initial consultation? Well, I, uh, typically our referrals come um, for newborn babies. They come right from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Those are babies that are premature or mm -hmm. babies who might have been um, exposed to substances while they were, uh, while the mom was pregnant. And that's mm -hmm. not always, um, sometimes those are medications that the mother had to take because mm -hmm. of a condition that she had. Um, we also get referrals, most of our referrals come from the local pediatricians. Okay. Um, and they'll refer a child if they have concerns about their motor development, their language development. Um, and we also have a lot of referrals from people in the community who know about our services because their neighbor had it, their mm -hmm. friend had it, their older child had it. Um, so the referrals really come from everywhere. Um, I think when a parent suspects that there's uh, a delay in their child's development, it's a, it's a very difficult thing. Sure. Um, everybody wants their child to be progressing and making Everyone friends. Everyone thinks their child's perfect, but we're exactly. not. Exactly. <laughs> right. um, um, and so, you know, when they go to the pediatrician, Sometimes it's, it's difficult to broach that subject mm -hmm. with the pediatrician, but the pediatricians in this area are really wonderful and, you know, they ask the right questions and they, they you know, know child development really well um, and they encourage families to make that referral. And it, it, is there a cost involved? Well, um, early intervention is part C of IDEA, so it is a... Uh, um, somewhat of an entitlement program, but insurance is billed in Massachusetts for early intervention, mm -hmm. and whatever insurance doesn't pay, the Department of Public Health pays. Um, there are some insurances that are not required to pay at this point. Um, to most folks who have insurance would be covered? Is that they fair to say? They would be covered. Right now <laughs> there is a family, um, an annual fee for early intervention services. Um, and that is based on family size and income, and so families are billed that fee. That's a Department but, of Public Health fee. But no one's turned away who, who needs a service if they have no ability to... No one's turned away. No, for sure. I can share with you, uh, you know, when I went to this uh, forum, there were a couple folks there that shared their stories, one of whom was a, a state representative who had had triplets uh, back, you know, uh, 16 years ago. And obviously, you know, there were some complications involved in that, and some of the, 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 um, the children were, you know, had some developmental delays. And so he became, uh, he wasn't aware of early intervention, and he took advantage of the program. 
and um, you know he became a you know a believer. Um, and now his three daughters are 16 years old and doing fantastic. And he would never, you know, you would never. It was just a thing in their past. And so um, he was there to advocate for the program. And I thought that was really terrific um, to, to hear those, those kind of stories. And you know, you see so many children who are just a little bit delayed and who just need that extra boost. They right. need some help themselves and their families need some help to just know what the right um, encouragement is for those children. Um, you know, I can think of a little boy who came into the program and um, he he had no social language, he had very poor eye contact, he got a diagnosis of <coughs> autism by the time he was three, mm -hmm. um, but we're in touch with his mom now, and he was in a special needs preschool for the first couple of years, and now he is mainstreamed into the regular classroom, doing extremely well, but she really credits that to the mm -hmm. fact that early on they got the help they needed, that he was able to really grow with the services, um, and so it's, I think it's a really important thing. The services are tailored to the needs of each child. We develop a family service pl plan with the family, um, and they determine you know, what goals they want to work on, of course with the input of the therapist, but um, they're always, the family is at the center of our services. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that the family knows the child best, and so if we can help them to enhance their child's development, that's our that's really our goal. I've, I've been through it twice, actually, personally. No oh. Yeah, I, I, I had uh, my first children were twins, and they were okay. three months early. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where, as a parent, you start to think about, uh, you, you watch your children, you see what they're just not picking up and, and coming along. And early intervention was uh, it was incredible for us because it really brought our twins. Now they're 12, and you wouldn't know any different. Right. Um, and then most recently, my two-year-old, same thing. He, oh, yeah. He's gone through the early intervention at, at the Kennedy Dunham Center. And uh, just with speech. And we didn't you know. even know this ahead of time. This is no, of course they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I think a lot of people um, shy away from it. They think, sure. uh, you know, it, again, this pro the pride comes in and they may not realize the, the services that are there right. and what it can really do for your family. Uh, it's really made a huge difference in our family. And so oh, it, it's, been, it's been wonderful. It's nice to hear. We always say this is, you know, it's not a club anybody really wants to belong to. But once they're part of it, they really figure out we're really there to help them. And, and the majority of the children are going to catch up and they're going to do really well. And, and we want to encourage them to get the help while they need it. You know, and, and for example, your child who was delayed in speech, mm -hmm. that becomes an issue because um, if you're two years old and you can't say what you want and you can't express your right. needs, then you get frustrated and the behaviors start to mm -hmm. come in. And um, there's no reason for that. We can give them other ways to communicate until they can figure out how they can talk. Yeah, yeah. and you'd be surprised how quickly this early intervention helps. I mean, within four to six months, he picked right back up, and that's you great. wouldn't know any different. So it's really it's important to get early, that early intervention help. That's terrific. The, um, you know, it's obviously the right thing to do from a human point of view, but you know, one of the points that was driven home, and I, I was listening to folks, there was a young woman who had uh, three children uh, who came and spoke to us uh, at the State House, and uh, she had an older son, and she, had, um, she lived in another state before moving to Massachusetts, and so she wasn't able to take advantage of early intervention for her older son. And he had some significant developmental disabilities, and you know, he's probably, unfortunately, looking you know, at, at having to be um, in, in group homes and so forth um, for, you know, probably for the rest of his life. Um, and that's going to you know, be a cost that the taxpayers are going to have to bear. On the other hand, she had a younger son, born here in Massachusetts, who had some developmental issues as well, had taken advantage of early intervention. He was there. He was a two-year-old, bouncing around the room, great kid. And uh, you know he he was still uh, going through the program, but you know he was going to be mainstreamed. He was going to go to re regular public schools, and so it, it just struck him. Well, you know, helping these folks is the right thing to do as a person. It also makes it makes economic sense to do it because that, that you know money spent at an early age to catch these problems saves you know tenfold down the road. And so Absolutely. I hope folks, um, and that was. You know, as, as someone who has to weigh in on the state budget, that yeah. that's great information yeah. for me to know because I want to make sure our, our tax dollars are going in ways where we can maximize the benefit. And things like early intervention really seem like you know, that is a. It's one of those things use. where when you talk about spending, people will weigh in on it, but until they're affected by exactly. it and, and see the value in it, right. you know, they don't realize how important and that I had funding not is. And I so I'm glad to hear from you guys and to to have this discussion, so that's, that's terrific. And hopefully and folks out there, there's someone listening who may, mm -hmm. may have uh, thought about it, and now they'll know a little bit more about yeah. where to get the help. Arlene, did you want to? I, I just wanted to add that we pretty much see about 10% of the children in the area in that first three years. Sometimes <laughs> they're just evaluated and they're not eligible, but oftentimes they're evaluated, they receive services for a short period of time, and they're on their own, and they're doing great. 
That's great. Well, our time is almost up. Maybe we could just wrap up and, and, and give uh, uh, Mike, give us your uh, uh, website, phone number, all that good information, and uh, great. Arlene as well. Great. Yep. Uh, Remax Spectrum, our uh, website is www.pembroke and Plymouth. Yes. Okay. Uh, www.remaxspectrum.com is our web address uh, and our telephone numbers are 781-293-2900 in Pembroke and 508-746-8402 in, in Plymouth. Terrific. Eileen? And we are Kennedy Donovan Center Early Intervention Program and our website is www.kdc.org and our phone number is 508-747-2012. Terrific. Well, thank you both so much for coming and joining me on my first show, and I want to thank the viewers out there for tuning in to the first uh, edition of Cutler Corner. Again, it's my honor to serve as your state representative, and I'll give a plug to my own website if you do need help and want to reach out to me, um, uh, www.joshcutler.com is my website, and it uh, has my uh, state house information, my cell phone number, how to reach us up at the state house or in the district office, all that good stuff. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you need help, and hopefully reach out to these folks that we've had on our guest uh, here today. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.